Hey, Cap3 students. This is Mr. Blevins again. We're going to look at um, a general region in the XY plane. So we got this elliptical shape in the XY plane. And above it, we got a surface. And just like before, we're trying to find the volume underneath this surface. But the shape that we're getting, uh, the, the area that we're working within to find this volume, is not a rectangle anymore it's it's round so when we talk about general regions we're just meaning that they're not nice rectangular 90 degree turns between variables there's typically some type of smooth transition uh, it can be any type of region but a lot of times we see them to be ellipses or circles and so what's going on is the same concept try to get an orientation where you can see this as I start moving from again notice these are negatives and these are positives so these are the negative x's these are the positive x's as I start to make my way from negative to positive this shape that I'm getting that's going through that the value on the x-axis creates a an odd shape that uh, gets wider as we go because this shape of the region in the area is getting wider until it gets to this widest point of the ellipse and then it starts to narrow again and then um, we're finding the volume just the same way as there it's just we're finding the volume underneath this surface over top of that elliptical region now instead of a uh, generic rectangular region so the thing is, and what's going to make this a lot tougher than with rectangular regions, because with rectangular regions, when we go all the way up, and when these have those sharp 90 degree turns, this is how far I go from, you know, in the x direction. Let me flip it around so it's negative x is to positive. So as I'm making my way left to right, the x's are going from here to here. And when it was rectangular, the y's were going from here to here. But they're not always. Like, for instance, when x is negative 2, notice the y's are going from this part of the ellipse to this part of the ellipse. They are not... Um, it's not always like negative 3 to, to positive 3. The, the value of y changes. The value of y depends on x. It depends on which x value I'm at. So when I'm at this x value, I go further up and down than when I'm at this x value, or then this x value. So the limits of integration for y, all right, so x is going from negative 3 to 3, but the y values are going from some function of x to some other function of x. And that's the way we'll have to handle these generic regions when it's not a, uh, a rectangle. When the value of y or x, it could be the other way around. But when the value of one variable uh, and the limits of integration, you know, how far I'm going up or down in this case, is dependent upon where I am horizontally. So the limits of integration, this is something we've never seen before. The limits of integration are a function of another variable. So uh, how far down I go, how far up I go, depends on where I am on the in the uh, outer integral. So this picture in your PowerPoint that I posted this week have this idea. So this is our surface, this is our function. And when we are looking at a side that bend like this, that change right? they're not um, rectangular what we have to do is come up with uh, and this is the case that we have these are X's so this is like an, a, a Y that's further away from the X axis this is the Y's that are closer to the X axis so notice what we do here we allow X that's the outer one to go from A to B, all right? And while we're within those, those the X's between there determine the Y's. And we go from the lower 
Again, you got to think of this as the x-axis. So this is closer to the x-axis than this is. So this is the lower value for y, which is a function of x. And this is the upper value of y, which is also a function of x. And so our limits of integration can be functions of x. Okay, so this is the function we're trying to find the volume under. In this case, we're integrating with respect to y first. And those are our uh, upper and lower limits integration, if you will, you know, looking down in the xy plane. And then dx, these last two should always be constants. Because again, it's a volume, we can't have a, a variable in there, so we have to have constants for this outer limit of integration. Now what this does, this is changing the order of integration. Changing the order of integration does not change the volume. So dx dy, that's um, reversed from what we were doing before. And the order of the differentials is determining our order of integration. So this is saying the first example, integrate with respect to y first, then x. This is saying integrate with respect to x first and then y. And whoever the outer one is, that's the ones who are the constants. So we're going between C and D here. Okay. And what we're saying is for every value between C and D, if I pick a Y that's in there, the values of the X's are dependent upon these two functions. This X that's further away from the Y axis is dependent upon this function. This X, which is closer to the Y axis, is dependent upon this other function. And uh, for each one of those, the uh, limits integration you can see in this picture, they're, they're getting tighter and tighter and tighter as we make our way from C to D. So as I make my way from C to D, the X's are, the lower X's is determined by this function. All right, lower meaning, again, closer to the Y axis. And the upper is um, this function. Okay, so uh, when we do these general regions, we could have, um, you know, both of these could be expressions involving X. Both of these could be expressions involving Y. Just maybe one of them is an X and one of them is a number. But the outer two, the outer limits integration should be the, the values of numbers if we're going to get an actual volume.